What is up guys? So today, instead of kind of an adventure and travel vlog, I'm gonna actually do a tutorial on how to change the composition of your photos. And I'm also just kind of be kind of taking an Instagram four by five and showing you guys how to make the most of your photos and change your composition with a few little tricks in Photoshop. They're super easy and once you know them, you can get extremely creative with them. So let's just jump right in. Right here, I have a blank canvas, just a four by five, which is essentially the crop for vertical Instagram photos. And we're gonna be going over four tools today mainly, and that's gonna be Liquify, Free Transform, Warp, and Fill Content Aware. Just so you guys can see, the Free Transform tool is Command T. You can see prompts this new kind of thing. And you know, if you drag upward, it'll bring your whole composition up and it'll expand it. And then if you hold Shift and drag it up, it'll just go vertical same thing for sideways if you just drag it it'll bring your whole composition that way and if you do shift and drag it it's going to just go sideways in that direction you can also go diagonal with this it's a really awesome tool and then also if you don't want to do command t in the edit tab right here is going to be free transform but you have to have something there for that to be clickable pull over here so you can see free transforms right here and then the warp tool is right next to it so under transform in here you just click warp and that's how you will access that tool so first up I'm gonna drag this photo of Perito Moreno Glacier that I took I'm gonna have this selected or you can just press B to get that selected and then I'm gonna just drag my photo over this which is my blank canvas and then continue dragging over here once it pops up and then just drop all right, so now that this photo is on my 4x5 canvas, I think we could probably all relate that we've had a photo one time that the Instagram crop made the photo look not nearly as good as we wanted it to, and it was super frustrating, but we didn't know what to do about it. So I'm going to show you a little trick. If you do Command T for free transform, and you want the entire photo in this, I'm not saying I do, but just for purposes of showing you how you can do this, I'm gonna drag this up a little bit so I can get that snow in the top left out of there. All right, and then just press enter. But the issue with this is now we have all this blank space and this doesn't look good. So I'm gonna show you two different things that two different things that you can do for this. I'm gonna make a copy of this photo though. So I'm drag it down to a new layer. And I'm just gonna hide one for now. And then I'm gonna drag the selection tool over the blank area. Control click that area click fill and just click OK. It's going to take a few seconds to do its thing. And then most of the time Photoshop does a pretty good job as filling this composition. Sometimes you will have to do some clone stamping or some brushing, but for the most part Photoshop does a pretty good job of this. Alright, so I'm just going to do Command D to deselect and I think Photoshop actually did a really good job at that. There's like a little bit of a line right here that I might brush over with uh, the brush tool or I might do some clone stamping of the water to make that more seamless. And then right here would just be an easy clone stamp job. But otherwise, Photoshop does a really good job of filling the gap sometimes. I'm not gonna go through and clone stamp and brush this. If you guys wanna see that, I can do a separate tutorial for something like that. So now I'm gonna bring up the copy of this that we made. And for this one, make sure it's selected. I'm gonna use the same selection tool and I'm going to select the not as steep part of the glacier. So I'm gonna draw this line directly after this area. And now what I'm gonna do is the free transform tool. So Command T. And then I'm gonna hold shift while I do this because I don't wanna lose any of the composition. And I'm just going to drag it outwards. And this is essentially just gonna stretch your selection and you're going to stretch it to the edge of your composition. Click enter, deselect to see it. And I think that looks pretty freaking good to be honest. Um, if you wanted to, this got stretched a little bit so you could go in with a layer mask and take that out so it looks as it was. But I think this did a great job. It kept the same composition. You know, we didn't lose any of our image. If anything, we just added to it. So this is a really, really good tool for this. So that kind of sums up a little bit of the free transform tool and the fill content aware tool. All right, so next up, I'm gonna take this photo that I took of Laguna de los Trace and same thing, drag it over to this composition. 
And then for this, I'm gonna click Command T, just kind of see where it's at. And I'm just gonna drag it here. And it looks like there's a little bit too much space in the sky, but I'm purposely leaving extra room because for this one, I'm gonna change the composition a little bit by kind of stretching the mountains with the liquify tool. Uh, you can also do this with the warp tool. I'll go, I'll show you both ways. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna make a copy of this, Command J, so I can show you two different ways to do this. I'm gonna come up to filter, liquify, and that's gonna prompt the pop-up. All right, so there are a lot of things going on in this window pop-up. If you accidentally press any key, a lot of these buttons are linked with shortcuts. So if you lose what you need, just come over to here and just make sure this one is selected. To be honest, I've never used any of this other stuff. Um, and the way that I kind of change the size rather than dealing with all this crap over here, because that looks like a nightmare, I just use the bracket keys to make the brush smaller and larger. And for this, I'm pretty much just gonna stretch these mountains up. You wanna have it, your brush size a little bit bigger than what you're gonna be stretching. So I'm just gonna drag this up. And I, I know that while I'm doing this, I'm gonna be changing some of the clouds potentially. So we can fix that always after with layer mask. And you will just wanna make sure as you're stretching up, does, nothing doesn't look too weird down here. Like I'll show you an example. So like if I come down here and drag this up with the liquify tool, even if I was trying to do something here in the snow pack, you can see that I ruined my entire horizon line. So you have to be really careful when you're using this tool. So I'm just gonna do Command Z to undo that. But yeah, I'm pretty much just wanna stretch these mountains while keeping it as realistic as possible. And that is definitely pushing the limits, I don't think that looks realistic, especially if you if you know someone that knows this where this photo was taken from. Um, it obviously does not look that stretched. But I'm just kind of showing you guys what you can do with these tools, and this is a good thing for changing a composition. As you can see, that this is our before, and this is our after. And I'm gonna make a copy of this. So. On this top layer, you can see I definitely warped these clouds, and that is a dead giveaway that you just use the liquify tool or something like that. So a good way to kind of get rid of this is having a copy under this layer, and then you're just going to throw a layer mask on your warped layer. And then I'm not going to go too into detail with this because I've gone over it in other videos, and this is not a video about layer mask. But, you know, same thing for this, you know, you're going to grab your brush, and for this case, you're going to actually be grabbing a black brush, or do 100% opacity, and you're essentially just going to brush over the clouds that got warped. You can either do this by making a selection of the sky if you want it to be quick and easy, or you can just brush it manually. That will essentially put the clouds back to where they normally were, and then you're just going to be left with these stretched peaks, and it's going to be a really cool look. Um, it definitely adds some depth to your photos. Again, I'm not gonna go into the layer mask in detail on this one, but that is a good way to kind of stretch things with the liquify tool. Just kind of be subtle with it, but you can get super creative with it. And now with this layer, I'm gonna show you guys how to change the composition with the warp tool. All right, so if you come into edit, transform, and warp, it's gonna pop up a grid like this. And essentially you can just kind of use these to your will. You know, if you stretch right here at the peak, you're gonna be affecting a lot of stuff down here. But if you stretch from up here, this 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 grid kind of feathers out what you're doing. So if you stretch up here, the effect of what you're stretching is gonna be the most. And as you go downward, it's gonna get less and less. And the same goes for side to side and everything like that. Like if I pull this image from the peak, you can see I just ruined the entire image. It looks like completely bulbed. It just does not look good. And if you're gonna be changing your composition, you have to be really subtle about it. So now if you just take this top piece and just drag that up a little bit, you'll see the effect is a lot more minimal and it doesn't really affect the bottom of the photo. It really just kind of affects the top of it. So that's a really cool tool. All right, and now another kind of way that you can play with the warp tool rectangular selection tool and make a selection of the top of your photo 
do it right above the horizon line because I don't want to affect any of the snow. And then do command T there. And now you're able, oh, that's not. And now once you have this selection made, come up to edit, transform, warp. And now you're gonna have another grid, but this time it's only going to be on the selection you made. So you can get even more fine tune. So like I'll drag this up just a touch. I will drag this one up kind of to piggyback that. And I'm actually probably gonna get the outer rims pulled up too. Just kind of so the horizon line stays as it should. Click enter. I'm gonna deselect that. And now I kind of just show you the before and after of what we did. So that's before and that's after. It's super subtle, but it definitely enhances the composition and definitely adds quite a bit to the photo, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want. So this is a panorama I took. I stitched it together in Lightroom. I think it's about 10 photos. Um, and it's really cool. These two lakes are awesome, but this place was absolutely impossible to get both of these lakes in a single photo, whether it be horizontal or vertical. So I posted a photo of this the other day and it looks really cool, but there was no way I was getting this photo to be how I wanted it to be without some serious heavy lifting of the tools I've already gone over in this video. So I'm going to drag this into here and this is obviously not edited like the one I shared already. Um, I spent quite a bit of time editing that one, but for this video, we're just going to go over changing the composition. So I have to zoom out quite a bit for this one. I'm gonna move a little bit faster since I've kind of already gone over all the tools and this I'm just kinda of gonna be culminating all of those tools and using it for this. So I just did Command T to get this. Now I'm gonna stretch this down and just kinda of get it to fit where I want it. And I'm, I don't, I'm not, there's no way I can get all of the lake on the right in this composition. There's just no way but all of the lake on the left, I do want that in this photo. So I'm gonna try my best to get that in there. Right now I'm gonna click shift and drag this up. Panoramas kind of flatten your photos so you can get away with quite a bit of stretching vertically like this. And I also want the mountains to have this really cool kind of jagged look to them so I don't mind the stretch. Click enter. So now I'm going to grab my cursor tool up here and just kind of drag this to where all of that's in the photo. And now I'm going to come up to filter and liquify for this one. All right. And now for this, I'm going to grab quite a big brush because I don't want this to be too specific. My main goal of this is to get the lake on the left fully in. And this lake is actually shaped like a teardrop, so it's super skinny. But when I did this panorama, it actually got stretched. So I also don't mind changing it quite a bit because it's already kind of modified from the way it was stitched together. But I'm just going to drag this in as much as I can. And I'm going to be staying on the lower part of the image because I don't want to affect the peaks and I don't want the peaks really, I don't want their positioning to change. I'm pretty happy with where they are. And this lower area had so much scree and just rock scramble and a lot of overlaying patterns and colors. So you can actually get away with quite a bit of manipulation in this area. Make I'm gonna push this in to make it a little bit more teardrop shaped. And I think that looks good. Let me do one more push in just to make sure. That's actually more so what it looks like in person than what it did initially. So now I'm just gonna click OK, Command T again. And now I'm gonna stretch this image without holding Shift because I want it to keep the orientation that it currently has. And I'm going to see if I am happy with how it looks or if I need to hop into liquify or do anything else with it. My computer's moving a bit slow from the screen recording. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. All right, now I'm gonna drag it out to the bottom just so it fits the four by five frame. That looks good. I'm gonna click enter and I'm actually really happy with that. And this is actually super similar to the photo that I posted and the photo that you guys have already seen. Um, so this composition was way different. I mean, this was 10 or so vertical photos 
uh, taken handheld and then I stitched them in Lightroom to a super wide panorama and now I'm doing all this stuff to kind of change the orientation. So now this photo could be printed, you know, 16 by 20, uh, 32 by 40. This could be posted on Instagram. It's great composition and kind of dimensions for sharing on social. And also I just think it looks really crazy having the peaks both in there like this. I think the last thing I'm gonna do is grab the rectangle, rectangular selection tool, kind of drag from the top corner. And I just am going to go down enough to where all of the peaks are included. Happy with that. And now Command T. And I'm gonna hold Shift and just stretch this up really to enhance the dramatic peaks in Patagonia. And I think I'm happy with that's a little too much. I'm pretty happy with that. Click enter. And in the final image, you know, I took out this lens flare. I think that's a speck right there. I took that out. And these people down here, I also took out. Uh, and this isn't exactly what I did. You know, I edited that like a week ago. But I'm super happy with this composition. I know there's going to be some people out there that are going to say, you know, this is not photography. And to each their own, you know, I really love editing in Photoshop. I love creating digital art. But I am very much so also a landscape photographer. I love shooting and being out there. But, you know, I really like to kind of create these images. And part of that is the editing process and some manipulation. Um, and this is just kind of how I like it. Everyone has their own taste. But anyways, I hope you guys found some valuable tips and tricks from this tutorial. If there's anything else you want me to go over um, or anything else Photoshop or Lightroom related, let me know in the comments. Would love to kind of make some more tutorials that would help you guys. But anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you guys on a future video.